What are we talking about? This is I'm fucked talking up. about fucking something here. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know where. I, I'm going I, down a road. I don't know if I want to go down it. <laughs> hey, I um, like the hair, man. I had never seen that. <laughs> I, I always had you, a hat on. Oh, really? Yeah. You never seen a uh, lady bus driver hair? Nah. That's what, that's what I got going on right lady now. Lady bus it's driver. Like, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I that's like it. that's like Italian server hair, like in yeah. Italy or something. You know, like totally. Olive Garden. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got Olive Garden host his hair. When, you're gonna, you're, you're, when you come here, you're family. I, <laughs> I feel like fucking... I feel like... Uh, yeah. I don't know, like... It's like somewhere <laughs> French, Italian. Now I gotta take a look. Because yeah. what happened is I cut it real short for a minute because I... Yeah, no, nah, for real. I got straight up like... Like Olive and Garden host his hair. Like, it's like it's not bedhead, right? You made that, right? You made that. No, happen. I didn't make this. This is just like... This you just, just wake up. Yeah, because I'm growing it back out. I okay. had it like long, okay, and then I cut it real short because I haven't had it short in a long time. Okay, and I was like, "Damn, this is great!" Because you don't have to do shit. Yeah, it's kind of just... Clooney-ish, kind of foreign Clooney. Right. You know, right? It's like a Pakistani Clooney or some shit. Yeah, Clunistani. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a Clunistani. <laughs> oh hell no. Okay, so this is, I mean, I'm, I think, I think we should do the story of Fabian. I think we should run the whole fucking thing. I think we just got it right now. Like a, that was the, it, the yeah. majority of it. All right, later. Right now, right. <laughs> um, that, because like, I think a lot of people, people in LA know who you are, but a lot of people that watch the show mm -hmm. don't know anything about yeah. LA or people inside LA. And I think your story is really interesting. I think hearing it from like start to finish would be great. And I'm sure there's going to be some, some things we can talk about in between. But um, did you get your coffee? Oh, you got your coffee. Yep. What I'm, is it again? I'm, I'm bumped up. He's all he's all fucking I'm jacked fucking up. Fucking spun out right now. Did you put the extra in there for him, Alex? A little fucking. Yeah, I can't just see my jaw twisting right now. Right. So again, that's how I get the good no, guess. Fucking stiff and shit. Oh good dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta take seven shits. Um. So let's 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 talk. Where did you grow up? We'll start there. Oh, introduce yourself. Ooh. It's a new thing. We're gonna have people introduce themselves. I'm going professional. Oh, this, this is a new thing now. Yeah, we're going. It's pro. a new. What you do before? We're just talking. Fucking, yeah, we just started hey, talking. A random guy, come here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously, it's been like that. Yeah. No, it's been wild. Okay. So, I'm Fabian. That's Fabian, Fabian Alomar. And Fabian Alomar, uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Echo Park, born and raised. Right down the street. Yeah. Echo Park. Yeah. Pretty much the same as when you grew up there, right now, huh? Oh yeah, it's pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All these hipsters everywhere. Yeah, I grew. That's how I grew up. Can't you tell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember Echo Park was like, you know, you're like, I don't know, you're gonna go over there. You gotta, you know, you maybe you don't want to go over there. It was like a thing, right? That that yeah. park if was. If you hairy. go there, you're probably scoring. Yeah. Or you're passing by to look at some ducks. Yeah. About to get picked off by some. People who are gonna eat them because <laughs> there's just a lot of there's like a little lot of families that used to go, like you know, and ducks would be missing. Right. And then before you know it, you pass by somewhere and like you go by Ted's house. Yeah. Ted and Kenneth, you know, that used to skate and fucking uh, talk like this, you know. Yeah. And now they're fucking fucking cooking duck, man. You want to have some fucking duck at uh, my mom's cooking duck at seven o'clock. Do you want to come over for dinner? Lake Duck. I'm like, no, motherfucker, no. Holy we shit. We bought food at Pioneer Market. Like, we're actually shopping. We're not going to the lake spearing duck. That's some nasty yeah, duck. Yeah, spear duck, bro. I feel like when, I like when they drain the lake, when they drain, um, they drain MacArthur Park Lake and we had a, we had an office over there. They drain that lake and I was like, I just want to know what's in there. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, when you what get the fish. I, I didn't get to find out, but you know, when you know when you're a kid, you have the fish tank and there's like a skeleton in it. You know, like, and I always think there's yeah. like a cholo skeleton, some guns, mm -hmm. probably a car or two. You know, when they when they drain it all out, there's still got a beanie on. Right. And uh, same with Echo Park, they drain that lake too, right? They drain bodies it. tied up in the back of a car that's yeah. got sank and shit. Like, yeah. I don't know, man. I I heard there was bad things in the MacArthur Park. Yeah. Yeah, back when they first did it, and yeah. in Echo Park too, they you know I know people personally. I was locked up with some fools that ran their car into there and I've pushed people into the lake and shit before, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Just when you push someone in the lake, it just wasn't you weren't no, playing. I was them. fucking them up. You were Pushed fucking them up. up. Yeah, they were yeah. invading my space. Right, and you just yeah. give them a good shove into the lake. No, I fucking pounded on them before I. And then up. threw them in. Pop, 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 and then they ran, and I just fucking ran with them and tossed them. Toss in the, the lake. lake. Damn. Because there were like it was a time when I was, <laughs> it's like. You know, it's been the past, man. But I was using those restrooms for other purposes, you know. Oh, I was getting high. You were getting high. Those are my little oficinas. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so I was getting loaded in there and people were coming being nosy. And I could see shadows. And oh, the shadow so people. So first person I see right there, they're yeah. getting it. <laughs> and it just happened to be like, you know, Felipe. You know, right. like, I'm like, hey, who are you going? Ping, 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 ping. And then right. push them in the lake. And that's it. It's just what it was, man. And like you know, I was I was doing my thing, and I didn't care. I didn't give a shit about nothing. Right. Yeah. Well, let's back it up before though. That's another chapter we're gonna get to. But I yeah. want to talk about going up in Echo Park, right? Teenage years. What happened? Did you get? Tell. Let's just let's just go through it. Like what 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 were you into? Let's say about thirteen to fifteen. I started skating around that time. Yeah. I I got into skateboarding and. Um, I got into skateboarding around that time, but it was in Rampart, Rampart area. Mm. Uh, right when the police station was there, me and a few of my friends, we used to hang out and uh, just ride bikes and shit. And then we uh, we heard some, you know, we were, we were on bikes that were not ours. They were like stolen and shit. And then we, we, we saw... We saw some kids from down the block. We heard them awling. They were doing some ollies and we were like, what the fuck is that? And we got on our bikes and went over there and it was this kid, Kenneth and Ted, the, you know, two Asian kids. And <laughs> they were like, and, um, why and, is Kenneth and Ted the Asian names? Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's, so the, that's for, that's my, that's my, <laughs> right, little, right, my yeah. perception. Right. right. <laughs> Kenneth and Ted, you yeah, know, and, yeah. um, and, uh, they were the, y'all right over there, homie? You all right? It's okay. You need some water, huh? Yeah, you good? All right, all right. All right. He's like, <laughs> yeah, my name is Kenneth. He's like, actually. my name's Ted, fucker. <laughs> Call me Teddy. <laughs> Kenneth Teddy over here. <laughs> so I uh, went down there and they were ollieing and making all this, like board, the making the board pop up into the, you know, doing tricks. And um, we were, we didn't know, had no, like, no clue what they was doing. So we sat there and watched and then, they were kind of standoffish. I'm like, man, no, nah, keep going. Like, we go to school with you fuckers. Come on. Yeah. We're all go to the same school, man. Keep going. And then they, they uh, eventually, long story short, they got tired of us borrowing their skateboards. Right. And uh, they're like, man, my mom and dad paid for this skateboard. But they didn't say it in that tone. But, yeah. you know, they said that my mom and dad have bought me this skateboard and, you know, I can't afford to like, they, they don't want me to let you borrow it because, you know, it costs a lot of money. You need to get your own and go to And I go, and I was like, well, where the fuck? First of all, my corduroys, <laughs> I was fucking up my corduroy pants and my and my shoes at the time. I think I had like a, some fucked up tennies. And, uh, but they were my school shoes. Right. So my mom, you know, uh, we didn't know where to buy a skateboard. We had no clue where to, right. where am I going to buy a skateboard? I, had, I didn't even know what. What year was this, this roughly? This was probably 87, no, 86. Fuck. 87, 85, 85, 86. It was around the, uh, a little bit after the Olympics, around 85, 84 around there. I don't really remember. I was young and there was this, this, this was amazing to me because they were like popping the board up and flipping, trying to flip it and jumping off the ramp that they made. And I was just like, damn, it looks so like crazy to do, you know? Yeah. Here I am on a bike just doing little stupid endos right. and popping wheelies. <laughs> right. You know, because right. we didn't know what to do on a bike either. Yeah. Um, bunny hopping, but that gets old. So I want to do it on a skateboard. It's like better. Plus, you could pick up a skateboard and use it like a bat, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I love that because yeah. it's like a weapon and you could have fun on, you know? Yeah. And I, but the bike, you can't really do that. You can't really pick up a bike. I've, I mean, you could, you could, but it's a lot harder. Yeah, you get could, one, you, you get a, one swing. Yeah, you could, you could get skateboard. It's like, you know, grabbed by the trucks and just like, now you're in the movie 300, you know? Yeah. I am Spartan. You yeah. know, you could, you go crazy with a skateboard. 
And believe me, we've done it. I've seen it. It's and, nasty. Um, so the first thing is like we went to Glendale. We went to Hollywood. We went to Beverly Hills and Jack and Fools. And back then, we piled up in the back of a truck, the Nissan trucks. You know how we, we everybody was there was like weekends are made for fun type of shit. You know, so... We were back there and we had a speaker back there and we were in a Ford Courier. My friends, rest in peace, his, his, my, my homie's brother, it was a Ford Courier and um, Burgundy. We were on Occidental and, and Heinz and uh, right behind Rampart. We all stole parts for this truck. We all used to go jacking shit, go to, go to, uh, Griffith Park with mm-hmm. the golf the 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 golf course mm-hmm. and you know how the nice cars are parked right there Christmas came around let's go getting presents you know cuz there you'll find people who bought presents for their families but they want to go golfers well, we'll come in and be like <laughs> jack shit you know yeah and um so we jack stereos uh different shit whatever you whatever you left in your car home so be careful when you leave your shit in your car man you I'm sure it you still goes down to this day. In some places, I remember when, when I was a kid, we had uh, they, this neighborhood dude had us give us a, a a bag full of shatter rocks. You know that little fucking spark plug thing. Oh, the the, the spark plug, the little piece will break yeah, the window. Yeah, and it goes. That was me. That was my job. It goes. Whoo. Yeah, and they so, were like twenty bucks a pull out. That was block punks. <laughs> yeah, Kenwoods. Yep. Um, Alpines, yep. all the pullouts. Yeah. that was me. Yeah. that was what I did. Yeah. So I did this with these two big ass. Uh, crackhead dudes eh, that used to know my dad. And yeah, they used to go and bring my dad all kinds of stuff. Yeah, my dad used to sell them dope. You know, right, right. And um, so they were they would be like, um, "Hey, hey, Fabian, what's up, man? You won't come with us?" You know, two big ass black dudes. Yeah, and they're like, "Yeah, well, yeah, man." Uh, and they would they would, "Come on, man, we got you. We'll take care of you." So we'd go drive up to Griffith Park, and got all these people, you know that don't smoke crack and they buy gifts yeah and then well, where i live not too far from here it was the opposite yeah. no gifts crack <laughs> you know yeah, yeah lots of it and um pcp too so and my house was like a party pad right i grew up in like everybody i wake up and see fucking strangers on my couch right you know some yeah, will still it? some will still be up looking around for shit and some will be knocked out right you know and um Carpet mining. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking putting things in their mouth and shit, yeah. you know? <laughs> fucking carpet surfing. Yeah. yeah. So, um, anyway. Uh, and you're a kid growing up. See, yeah, like, growing, yeah. coming up and seeing that. You're oh, like, yeah. I was used to that. That's normal. Mm-hmm. Normal, yeah. Do you forget that one thing at the store? Now you can get snacks, drinks, and other grocery essentials. You need to deliver an hour DoorDash. I'll tell you right now, this guy loves fucking DoorDash. He gets home. He doesn't want to cook. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to revisit his days in the joint making spread. He doesn't want to see a fucking apple. I offered the man an apple. He told me to go fuck myself. He says he doesn't ever want to see a fucking cup of noodles in his life. This fool does not want to cook shit. He wants DoorDash. Am I wrong? I'm not wrong. I'm right. The thing is... To me, DoorDash means something totally different, homie. What does DoorDash mean to you? It just sounds like kick in the door and steal shit and then dash. Well, there's that too, but I don't think they're going to like that for their sponsorship that they've given us. And their DoorDash means food arriving at your house with the press of a button. You look in your phone. I mean, can you imagine if you could just, did you ever think this would happen? You look in your phone one day and you press a button that says cheeseburger and it shows up at your house. Whatever you want, anything you want. You want fucking spaghetti? We can get it to you in like 10 minutes. And always DoorDash connects you with the restaurants you love right now and right to your door. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with the contactless delivery drop-off setting with over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, Australia. You can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants. Sometimes I don't literally don't want to get up and go get chicken. From lazy ass. Lazy. I don't want to go to Kismet Rotisserie. I'm too lazy to go over there. So I open up the DoorDash and I order it. And I could have just gone driven five minutes, but I don't because I'm sitting here and I'm binge watching something and I don't want to. And it's just something nice about it. It's just something nice about being treated. This is our version of of just being treated like royalty. And this is where we're at in the world. How to feel nice. 
is by ordering chicken. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off on zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code PTA2021, that's 25% off up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter code PTA2021, don't forget that's code PTA2021 for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. I, 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 um, I got my skateboard the first five skateboards we got, we had a choice to pick out which ones we wanted. And um, we used to like just get them from a, a donut shop. A donut shop that was outside in Eagle Rock and Glendale or right on Colorado Boulevard. I think it's Eagle Rock. There was a, a donut shop next to a church. Where, and in the future, I'd be going there to go and skate at some contest. Be like, hey, I think that guy stole my skateboard. <laughs> I'm like, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> Gone. Oh, you get them. From, yeah. Oh, okay. So we jack these kids, and then right. end up later on becoming really good in skateboarding, and then they kind of recognize you. You know, it's kind of right. weird. It's funny because um, they left their skateboards outside in this donut shop, and we would just come and take it. But like then they just, again, they just leave them parked, like just parked up against the wall. Yeah. And, and you they, just, but you just they go in and them. play video games. All right. They're in there playing video games, and their backs are turned. to fucking skateboards are outside. And then here you guys, you got me and my friend Juan will come by and just jack them. And then there's a truck, a, a, a Ford Courier truck with, with sounds and rims, all stolen, everything that we, that, that's waiting for us running just to get in, throw the boards in there and take off. But back then you could, you could hang out in the back of the truck and not have no problem. You know, you could, the cops won't give you a ticket. So then the shoes became a problem too, you know, because skateboarding is shoes. You need shoes, you need clothes. You can't skateboard in your corduroys. Well, you could, but you look funny. Yeah. You know, Jersey corduroys. Right. You know, and you're fucking peachy shit folder. Up. Orale, let's go skate. You know, you can't <laughs> do that. So, so it's like we, we needed shoes. So my mom was like, well, I could get you these Converse. That's all I can afford. Yeah. We go to El Piojito down in uh, MacArthur Park, the swap meet, and $11 Converse. But those $11 Converse get Ollie holes the first day. And Converse ain't good. Chuck Taylors are not good for skate. Nowadays, you got some dope ass skate shoes from yeah. Chuck T- from Converse. But yeah. back then, it was just the Chuck Taylor, the, the regular canvas. It sucked. You know, yeah. it's not good. Yeah. So, um, by the way, Converse, I, I need a shoe sponsor. So Shout out. Yeah. yeah. Sponsor this. Yeah. Man. Hook it up, fool. But they'll come around. Yeah, well, hopefully. <clears throat> but we would go to Chinatown. You know, China, they, they, they leave their shoes outside, Holmes. Right. And Echo Park in Chinatown, real close by. So we would go there and we'd just be creeping up like frogmen, homie. And like, you know, but damn, you know, we, we got big feet, homes. And they're all like, kind of like, you know, some of them were pretty small. So I got some shoes that were like a little bit bigger than my phone, homie. I'm trying to like, fuck, these ain't going to fit. You know, and like every, every house we went to was like, damn, these are bomb, but they're like this. My, my toes will be like that. I can't do it. So we, uh. I ended up with, some, you know, that was our spot. We would leave our dusty ones there and get the good ones. Oh, you leave the old ones yeah, there too? Yeah, well, we got to leave them something. Homie. Right, right. Come on. Gotta, Can you imagine you come outside to put I'm your shoes a, on in the morning? I'm not a total some, dick. Come on. <laughs> some old Converse. You're like, what the yeah. fuck? Old beat up fucking Converse yeah. with missing bottoms and the like, ollie holes. Because we used to duct tape the dog shit out of them. Duct tape, oh, wow. duct tape, duct tape. So then the duct tape, it would go through eventually. So then we just, man, they found some busted... Dang, don't go near those shoes. And by this but, time too, you're obsessed with skating. If you're duct taping well, yeah, your shoes, yeah, you're, you're stealing I, shoes, you're stealing skateboards. You're like, I gotta skate. And are you ollieing by then? By by all means, bro. More than yeah. ollies. I was jump ramping, wall yeah. rides. I was doing it. Oh you know, yeah, I was, wall I was, rides. I was, I was, I was uh, hand plants, right? Inverts. Oh my god, that's so eighties. I was doing no, hand com- no complies, power sliding. That when that <laughs> went down, downhill was downhill. Yeah. You know, this is like the late eighties. Yeah, yeah. I remember mm-hmm. that whole style. So, so it was like Paul Peralta, GNS, yep. H Street. Yep. Like it was big, bro. It was oh yeah, huge. H Street. Yeah. And and like uh, Cos- Dogtown, Cosoy Hammerheads. Yeah. Like I, I I used to love Christian because he used to hook me up when he saw me. But again, I would go to Venice Beach was the only spot that we could go to. That right. was legal to skate and good because everything was skateboarding was a crime. All this pedal and skateboarding is like, ah, you missed me with that shit. Yeah. You know, I didn't yeah. care about none of that. I, I, and the security tried to get me. I, that's when my skateboard turned to a bat. Right. You know? Right. And a shield. 
Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Skateboarding went for a minute back in that. People don't know this, but it was like degenerate, only degenerate skateboarded, right? Like, yeah. From the way it was like skating, they had those things. Skateboarding is not a crime. You weren't allowed to skate anywhere. And now it's in the Olympics, right? But, right. but, hey, you yeah. Know. We got chase skateboarding, bro. All the gangsters and like all these fools that didn't know about skateboarding, like they didn't know. The majority of us were, there was probably like 10 or 15 of us, you know, hanging out skating at a spot. But, there was only a few of us that stood behind and fought because you know we were we 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 recognize who they are we know who these fools are but the majority of them got up and ran like oh even though we outnumbered these guys right and we got a weapon right but these dudes these kids i hung out with they all wanted to be like tony hawk and they all had their hair like this and they were like bro fucking i'm emo and i don't even know it you know <laughs> like they're all just you know they grew up like that. Yeah. They all wanted to be Jimmy Z's down the game and Stussy and uh, um, what was another big one they wanted? TNC Surf and like all these. Oh, I, just, I grew up with all that. And that the fucking era. Jimmy's with the Velcro belt. Jimmy's with the Velcro everything. Yeah. Velcro neckline. So <laughs> sick. No, I'm joking. No, that they shit was tight. Jimmy's was dope though. She was with dope. The, with the Woody yeah. on the front. Yep, the Woody. Yeah. Like I mean, that. there wasn't, we didn't have options. Like there, there was like five companies that did stuff and then they didn't have shoes yet. No. Now there's a million things everywhere. But like, yeah. I remember having those pants and just being like, like my, like my dad, my dad knew someone over there at Jimmy's and like probably fucking sold him weed or something. And then like he gave me a shirt and these yeah. pants and I'm just like, you know, mine just fucking shocked. Just like couldn't, couldn't handle that belt. Just rip, turning it off, just making that noise all day. But <laughs> everybody loved that style. And then you yeah. would fold your pants tight at the bottom. The surfer roll. Like roll and then yeah. you fold, roll it a couple yeah. of times, overlap it and then do it again so that it's super tight. Yeah. I use that for when I stole stuff. Throw it down my leg and it would right. stay there. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it would stay there like a, a 40 or something, you know? Right. Yeah, the surfer roll. And we learned a bunch of stuff. And then when we met, we're like, it's crazy because down the line, I would get this the skate shop sponsored us called Silver Green on Vermont. Okay. There's a bunch of Korean skaters, right? They were like, uh, they were a Korean family owned shop. Yeah. And they had this gay dude named Palo. Pablo. Pablo, and they're like, I, I don't got nothing against gays, bro. I like, I love gays. Gays is, I'm cool. I'm, I'm gay. Fuck it. You know, like, but you know, I, I like, I, I'm, you know, gays are cool. But here's the thing. This, this dude was like, where he would follow me around the store, bro. Follow me around the store. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, what are you doing, man? I'm just looking. If I'm going to steal something, I'm gonna, I'll steal it. And he goes, I'm just watching you. You know? I like watching me for what? what? There's reasons you're watching me. Are you watching me for the story? You're watching me because you want this. Right. And he's like, he's like, and he goes, ah, ah. like, you know, like, whatever. Walk away. Like, you know, I'm like, dude, I can't figure this guy out, but he's giving me a hard time. Every time I come to the store, I'm sponsored by the store. Right. I should be able to walk in the store I'm sponsored by. Right. Right. This guy gave me a hard time. So what we did was they, they asked all of us, they were getting a big shipment. Remember? I don't know if you remember back in the eighties, they had the, the, Nike Delta Force were in to skate with the mm. Delta Force, the Air Force. They were all types of high tops of Nikes. Yeah, they were yep. like sick skate shoes. Yeah. While they had a big shipment, we all helped them, and we all turned on them. That was the day of the the day. That was like Day of the Dead and Blood in Blood Out, homie. No. We're gonna help. We're gonna we're gonna ha let, have them help us, and then we're gonna flip and turn it on them and get them. No. And we stole like sixteen pairs of shoes each, all of us, and there was like twenty kids. We Wait. jacked the whole truck, homie. No. The whole truck was gone. We had it in different places. We still all around it. They found some of it because we had it in in, in tr trash cans, apartment buildings. We took off running those shoes right there. <laughs> the the yeah, Nike Delta the Force, the Air Force ones, the the, <laughs> the, the fucking moon boots. Yeah, the, but but those were the six skate shoes yeah, back in the day, in the eighties, bro. In the eighties. Yeah. Fuck. I'm telling you, the late 80s, mid 80s, we, we, those were the, the shit to skate in. So they Puma, sponsored you Pumas, guys. all kinds of shit. Like Pumas were dope to skate in too because it was still like breakdance era, you know? Yeah. So and, they sponsored you. Yeah, they sponsored us. And, and then one said, day you guys said, fuck it, we're taking yeah. everything. And it all Just because of Pablo, bro. Just pirates. Pablo, of Pablo fucking, yeah, it was his fault. Because he was fucking with you all the time. Yeah, because he would, you know, will and grace me to death. Oh my God. <laughs> Can't even say that anymore. We're gonna have to edit that. I don't know if you can say. Well, yeah, Grace. Fine. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't even know anymore. See, that's how that's how much we're dating ourselves. Um, 
Gosh, you guys, how old are you guys? Is that real? Is that hair? Does that mean what's going None on? Of it's, yeah, there's a lot going on in here. Yeah? There's a lot to look at. Sure. Will and look Grace was dope, right? I never watched it. I never watched it. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I didn't watch it. I, he's, I, he's not saying anything, so I'm sure he did. <laughs> it's a good show. It's a solid he's show. So, I was in prison. I watched every show, man. I don't care what it was. I watched too much TV. I don't even know what it was. So basically, like you, you, um, I love TV. Also. Yeah. Uh, you, so you, you guys. Now, when you, when you took the, the shoes, did they know? Did you do it in front of them? Was it like a, a no, hostile takeover? It wasn't like oh, you just hostage. started ripping them off. Oh, okay. no, no, like fucking, everybody get down. No, not like it was like they didn't know. They left it to us. Right. Oh, and we were fuck. like, hey, hey, fool. Yeah. You want to get these and take it started off like just get one. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, get yeah. one each or two each. Everybody, just get two each. It was me and another fool. Just like, hey, everybody just get one. Don't don't go crazy. Yeah. And then this this other <laughs> fool named Hugo and, and and Hugo and Adolfo were brothers. Yeah. And then my bro Juan and everybody just started taking more. I'm like, wait, why are you getting three? I'm getting three then. Yeah. Nah, fool, nah, nah, hey. And then we start looking at each other, just laughing. It became like, fuck it. We're all getting as many as we can get. Before you know it, there was like Three shoes left in the whole truck. Dude, these Korean dudes were so mad. They wanted to kill us. But we were gone. And then, hear me out. Years later, about a year and a half later, they had a big Elva demo mm. where J John Thomas, who was my friend now, John Thomas, the guy who invented the JT, uh, and Dave Duncan, and a couple other, other guys. I can't remember their names. And I'm sorry if I can't remember their names. But they came down to do a big demo. And then here we blended in with the crowd. The thieves blend in with the crowd. <laughs> the ex-sponsors blend in with the crowd. And we're like, yeah, let's, let's, uh, and so we're blending in and they're kind of like looking at us, but we're like, you know. It's like the last scene in Braveheart when they're watching <laughs> get executed and they're all in disguises. <laughs> You're just creeping. <laughs> hey, we came back to the scene of the crime, bro. We're like, dude, well, I didn't, and back then no phones, no, no, no emails, no texts. We didn't have no beepers or nothing. We were just like, we just all showed up because in skateboarding, nobody was throwing big events like this. So all the kids just came out from under the ground like roaches, bro, that came that and just started. And we all went to the same spot and we were looking at each other like, damn, boy, have you, let me, do you still got some shoes left? They go, nah, I sold some and I kept a couple. Everybody like, I sold some, I kept a couple, you know, but it was just uh, we all we all went to this demo and now we're following JT and we're going down to uh, Shadow Park. We went from Silver Green one first in Vermont. Now, if you know where first in Vermont is, there's like Little Caesars and there's a donut shop, and then there's all kinds of little crazy shit right there, and there's always like a bum right there. Mm -hmm. And then so we we followed that. It was like Silver Greens was right around there, and we followed them all the way to Shadow Park, which is like on Fourth Street or Fifth fourth i believe and then you we, we turned into shadow park where the bowling alley is yeah and then they, they all eat the stairs and this whole big crowd that couldn't be contained bro i seen pablo i seen him <laughs> he was still there and he didn't say you know he made eye contact with me he knew what you did oh he knew whether he did or not i had something ready for him i had my board right and by that time i was carrying an ice pick so it was like nice was, yeah so i i mean i would i, would, I wish he would but he did it and How old were you about this time? Didn't. I'm glad he didn't. Pablo, yeah. it was it's all on the water under the bridge now, Pablo, if you're looking at this. Yeah, he's watching. Yeah. Pablo, what's up? Pablo, dog. Pablo. You're my boy. Yeah. So you Thank gotta, you. You're skating. How old are you? You're rolling around with the ice pick, right? You're skateboarding. This is before you got you went pro, right? Before everything, bro. Before okay. I even got sponsored. Before you got sponsored. Yeah. You had an ice pick because you're from the neighborhood. Because right? I don't like people stealing my skateboard. Okay, fair. I don't want nobody jacking me. Right. I don't want nobody taking my board like and being a victim. Right. You know? Right. And like I've been, we've been surrounded and punched out by by blacks, Mexicans, and everybody you could think of in between, bro, just to try to get, because they figure, oh man, skateboarding, man, you're a pussy, you're right. a punk. Right. Because skateboarding was like that. Right. It's That's like, the ecosystem. Yeah. The gangsters are on the top yeah. and you have graffiti writers and skaters and they just, they, yeah, they skaters goes were down. at the bottom, bro. And yeah. no, let, no, 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 let me, re let me rephrase this. Rollerbladers are at the bottom. The, everyone homie. picks on them. <laughs> you're at the bottom. I yeah. don't care. Even yeah. a roller skater's above you, rollerbladers. Absolutely. Yeah. I, so if you're blading, homie, you just, no, I, I don't even tell me you're in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, that's food. Now nah, right I don't there. care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, and then so roller skaters were like above that. 
Yeah. Rollerblading was just like, because they did this thing called like a soul grind. Yeah. And it was like soul grind. It was like you, you jump on a rail. Instead of grinding a rail, you cross your feet right away before you jump on a rail. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> you jump on, right? Like this, normal. Here's your feet. Here's your standing. And then you jump on and it... It's like, what are you... What's that? That kills me, man. That I'm sorry. It's fucked anyway, up. Anyway, I, I, I still don't got... What would you I'm do? If, what would you do if you had a son and you started rollerblading? <laughs> <laughs> he comes. He comes. He wants to rebel against you, and he comes home with just the freshest pair of rollerblades. <laughs> You're like, fuck it. I guess I got. I got sponsored rollerblading. Yeah, he's bringing a check too. Yeah. Well, how, what's the check like? It's fat. He's bringing a fat ass check. It's like there I'm was okay. a minute when they were getting money rollerbladers. I knew a friend of a friend was dating this rollerblader dude, and we're like. And he was making fucking money. He just he had a little mohawk soul and grind. Dude. Yeah, she was wild. Yeah, like that's sort of soul patch came in. I think where you got nothing and he just got the soul patch, <laughs> and it goes with the soul grind. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the soul grind. Yeah, it was a soul grind, bro. With the soul <clears throat> patch, you were like in. So you're rolling around. You got an ice pick. You got the skateboard as club when needed. When needed. Yep. Um, man, I remember. I remember these dudes got it. These drunk guys picked a fight with some some kids in Venice skating. I remember this. I just watched this whole thing. I used to sit there and just like, you just sit there all day. It's fucking just a carnival. Yeah. And these two drunk guys, big fucking, one of them was mowing, and they picked a fight with these these local Venice kids. Right. And I just watched them tee off on this dude with like the the bad side of the, with the trucks uh. on top of their head. And I just was like, I just, you know, you feel it. You're like, oh. Like it was. Yeah. That shit gets seared in your head. You're that's like, I'm a good not. One. Yeah. You know, that's a that's yeah. That they didn't know. That's why skaters didn't know. They're like, you guys are all armed. You're 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 fully ready for combat. You just don't know it, and you don't. You know, there's a big there's a line, right? You don't. You know. So as a pro skateboarder, that were just you just brought a little. Um, as a pro skateboarder, I'm on this place called Beneficial, now it's known as Jaquan, um, uh, on Wilshire Boulevard. They renamed it like the the new version of skateboarding. Mm -hmm. Named it Jaquan because the building changed. And this is your first your first uh, like sponsorship. Like legit? nah, I've already been pro for a minute. You've been pro for a minute. I've been pro for a minute. Okay. I'm like I'm I'm doing videos and all. You're doing videos. Shit. Okay. This this security guard. I'm skating with Jason Dill, uh, Eric Pupecki, Guy Mariano. Uh, uh, Keenan Milton, rest in peace. Mm. Gabe Rodriguez, rest in peace. And I'm skating with like Socrates is my filmer. We're all skating beneficial. It's a long gap. It's like a it's a small runway about this big. The runway is like this. It goes on forever. And then there's a gap from like here to where you're at. Mm -hmm. And that this there's gap to ledge. And then you do your trick and it's a little bit higher. Mm. So just to like a little bit higher, like from here to here. Mm -hmm. But that distance. I I come, I'm I'm trying this trick that I've never I've always imagined me doing. It's a front side when I'm goofy, so it's a front side one eighty kick flip to fakey nose grind across it. I've already kick flipped it. I've one eighty nose grind it, but I wanted to front side one eighty kick flip nose grind. Like I I so I figured I could do I could do frontside flips really good, and I, and as long as I could front, I could frontside flip the gap. But to stick it, it's all about precisely aiming it onto the thing. Because then, if not, you go over. Any of you skated? Yeah. Okay, so you know you go over and it's slick. You're done. And that, that the ledge is like this high. The ledge is like this high to begin with. So you hit that and then you fall. It's going at a nice speed. It's bad, bro. It could be ugly. So from here to to your shoulder. Is the gap maybe mm. it's longer? I don't know. Maybe it's a little. I don't know. I'm I'm giving it that. But and then and then you you're, it's all bad, man. So I, I was getting into. I'm sticking it. Everybody's doing crazy shit on this gap, by the way. And it's at nighttime. Bad time to fuck with someone when they're trying a hard trick. Mm. Here comes security guard, tough guy, Hispanic. He comes in. Hey, from far away. Hey, you guys got to stop skating. That's it. And he came in like in a hurry, big old chubby dude, big, taller than me, big guy, older guy. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, look, pay, can I, can I, can I beg you, please, please, let me just do this last trick. I'm almost, I almost got it. And I'm grinding. I'm like, I'm, I'm a, I feel like I was getting close. Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing their shit, but I'm telling, I'm the only one speaking up to this guy. Right. I'm like, hey man, please, please. 
And um, he stands like this far away and I'm right here. There's the runway and he stands this far away and he's not saying anything. I'm thinking he's going to let me come with my trick. And he sticks his arm out and gives me my own medicine. What I used to steal skateboards with with kids back in the day. He clotheslines me. He Bam! Clotheslines you. I fall. My skateboard flies. Ooh. And I fell. And right, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe this motherfucker. I turned into that face right there. Grace Jones. <laughs> and and I just walked up and grabbed my board. And then bland him. Didn't even think twice about it with the strength and just gave him a full fucking pow. You know? Straight Maguired him. And then fucking he falls down, starts doing the fish. Ooh. You know? Yeah. Break dancing on his back, upside down worm. Yeah. And then uh the homie filming it. Got all this on film. Oh, shit. So it's like, it's like, man, it's a society now. Let's go watch this shit. <laughs> so we went, so, so we went, so we go, fuck. And everybody's like, dude, let's get out of here. We ran. We go back to Keenan's apartment and, and Pupeki. They live with each other right around here, right down the street from here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I didn't get to watch it because some of the guys in the car, some of the fellas felt like that was wrong what you did. Motherfucker, you just came you just got back from going on tour with me. Yeah. You know how it is. Like if someone fucks with you yeah. or, or someone fucks with me rather. Yeah. You know, I, like you might let them, but I'm not. Right. That's that's you, how you want to be. Right. But I'm not. Right. And I, I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. Don't worry about me. You, you're not going to jail. I right. am, if anything. Right. So I'll, I'll go for mine. I'll do whatever I got to do. And what's it, what's it matter to you anyway? Yeah. You know, you ain't even from California. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, from LA to top it off. Right. So don't worry about what I do in my yeah. town. Yeah. So he didn't let me in the house to go watch the video, the Menace to Society, our skate version of Menace to Society. Right. You know, we didn't, we didn't put that in the video. We didn't ever drop it because it would have been bad for you. Yeah, but it, like incriminate me. Right. It's like snitching on myself. Right. Unless we blur shit out and really do, but it's like not worth it. So they deleted it right away instead yeah. of giving it to me and letting me have the option. Right. Probably for your best, it's probably in your best interest that it was deleted. You know, that shit would have been so dope right now to have though. Anyway, it's not, it's not, it's not, it, it, it's the best. Probably, the, probably the best. So then I went and uh, we, we left that alone and uh, it took me a long time to go back there. There was like all these little, like cops and they had to pay like little postage signs and but see now here's the thing wait like a like a find this man like a find yeah like, like what happened if you know this person oh shit yeah oh, okay so uh i feel bad for doing that and you know that, that that was wrong but at the same time like this goes to show you how i've changed right because back in the day i didn't really care too much even yeah. though i skateboarded and i had this really beautiful gift and and a powerful thing that on a piece of wood that i could make so much money and change so many lives yeah i didn't even realize what how how uh how much leverage i had over people and like that that an influence too so what i'm trying to get at is you know after this last stint in prison mm -hmm. where i i i got i was released from pelican bay after serving five years mm -hmm. you know um in reception, I was in San Quentin for for five months or yeah, about five months. I was in San Quentin, and it, and, and I was bored in there, so I started using drugs and I OD'd, and um, and uh, I OD'd in the cell, but not to where like they called the cops and they had to pump me and shit. But like my cellie brought me back and helped me, and um, and he was just a kid from Richmond, mm. nineteen or twenty years old, you know, and um. So I scared him straight with that. Right. Because he used to get high and act all tough. And he was like, man, after that, he was just like. He was good. Yeah. He was like, right. <laughs> angel, <laughs> you know, right. he want to fly straight. Yeah. So. And this was in, this was in the pen that you were fucking getting high. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big hair. But, but you there. didn't, but you were sober for a bit. Well, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sober now. You're sober now. You yeah. never were. So, so you really got into drugs in jail. I got into drugs in the street and okay. I took it to jail. And you took it to jail. Yeah. So you were never sober there. Mm -mm. But it got bad is what happened. Mm -hmm. It got ugly. Because you yeah. got more bored. Well, all the all the opportunities along with skateboarding. Yeah. As a pro skateboarder, I was carjacking, robbing 
uh, hard. Uh, I robbed hardware stores. I robbed a uh, bunch of people. I never robbed any kids and no women, but I robbed a bunch of men and people who I felt deserved it. So mm-hmm. as you're as you're becoming a pro skater and and moving up the ranks, yeah. right? You're getting recognition. People know who you are, and like you're probably sticking out in the skate community because there's not a lot of dudes like you skating. Well, yeah, right. It's it's like a very like you know there's very a, small, yeah, right. There and probably if none, right. There's maybe a couple that you've ever seen. Um, what's home? You know, homeboys. Uh, Jesse Martinez. Jesse, I mean Jesse Martinez. Yeah, uh, of course. I mean all the dog time. Most of the dog, you know, Tim Jackson. All those guys are you know, but they're all for like guys from Venice. But even. Uh, what's homeboy's name uh, with the fucking uh, I don't know why I can't think Ooh. of it the, the tattoos on his face uh, uh, um, Antoine Dixon Antoine, that's another dude that sticks out you're like that I've, dude's- I've seen him in the county jail a couple of times I'm sure you have mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know but you guys you guys stick out because that's not the norm for skateboarders right usually usually guys are that being active like that are out doing other shit hey you want to know something I seen huh. Jeremy uh, what's this kid's name you guys probably know him He's uh he's the one with all the tattoos in his face, a white kid, Jeremy. Jeremy. What is he? What what's is his he, name? Is he a skater? Or yeah, he's he... a pro skater. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I know exactly. That's, what's his name? That guy. Yeah, yeah. He started what, rapping. What's his shit. name? Yeah, yeah. Chris Evans. No, no, no. You had no, him. No, no, no. You, you just had him, him homie. He was a rapper. Jeremy Rogers. Jeremy Rogers. I remember this dude. Ah. I remember this guy. He should have called him Mr. Rogers, because <laughs> that fool was scared when he saw me in jail. Right. Yeah. And I go, hey, Holmes, I go, what's up, man? Don't I? I'm walking down the hallway by myself and he's walking up and I seen him and he's like, I go, what's up, man? I go, I look at him and then I look back and I go, hey, hey, what's up? I, and then he's like, hey, do, 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 <laughs> right. And I'm like, I think I, I think I know. Hey, I think I know. I, I know you or something. He didn't look back. I didn't know that dude ended up going that to jail. That motherfucker just kept trekking, boy. Was it was it drugs? Must have I don't right? know what he did. You don't but, know. but whatever. Like I'm not. I'm just. You never. I'm, up I'm, with I'm, him. I'm. I'm picking fun on him, but right. he's a good kid, bro. I just seen him and he act like. And I just seen him not too long before that, but in jail blues. Right. My blues are big. I buy. I get them ironed and shit. You know. I get. Yeah. The, I get the brand new ones. Right. So on. You know, it's a little different for us. You right. Know? Right. And and I had the big ones, the ones you go to court in. Every time I step out the. The, the 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 dorm in the dorm i'm in my shorts yeah no shirt yeah socks shoes on tied up <laughs> right but inside there yeah when i take off and they go and call me for medical i put on the the fucking crispy creams bro the crispy ones you know okay. what i mean yeah the ones with the creases and the big ones look like <laughs> fucking big ass you know it makes me look bigger than what i am anyway right and i like them because they just starched up right <laughs> and um uh, and him he, he was walking by he had some like <laughs> He looked like he was a COVID bum, eh? He passed by, he had some. Who's that? That's Jesse. That's little Jesse. You probably met Jesse on the- Jesse who? Uh, you probably met him on one of the shoots. There Jesse. he is. Jesse. What's up? Fucking vato. What's up, man? The only fucking Jesse. Mexican with braids in LA that could get away with it. I said, what's up, fool? How you doing, homie? Good to see you, homie. Got you some gifts. Got you, some, God, got you a fresh you, box. Damn. Damn. You got the- Oh, right here. Bam. <laughs> they you said know, it's a normal one. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? It's a normal one. <laughs> I was like, where's the boy? Yeah, You're like, where's, where's the logo? It's under the it? LA. No, it's yeah. not. Yeah. It's invisible ink. That's clean. You know where this is from, right? The movie I did. Oh, yeah. We're going to get to that. Flaming hot. We're going to get, we got to. Bam. I'm, I'm walking. I'm going up the whole ladder. Tell Fireball I said, hey, give me hey. some chon chon. Hey, shout out your handle real quick so people can follow you if they watch this. They gonna watch this. This is the homie okay. Jesse. You guys wanna in here? Yeah. Jesse, that's J S E J S E. Give him a follow. Give him a follow. Yeah. He's got the plug. Follow the fireball too. Eh? He's got, got the plug. The fire vines. He does. Yeah. He's hey. He's still running vines. I'm gonna still. Vines. Yeah. I'm gonna still do. I'm gonna Damn. still do a style. The fool stuck in the '90s. The eh? vines are dope. So I thought I was stuck in the '90s. Damn. Okay. So. What do you got? He give you anything good? I told him to grab you some oh, shit. Put it down. I said, get some shit that you think he would like. And nothing yeah. goofy. No crazy colors. No crazy colors. Yeah. Um, nothing so, red. Ah, nothing no, just red. kidding. Just kidding. He's kidding. It's peace. Winning season returns at mybookie.ag. And it's time to get in the action. First time players can get started by doubling your first deposit, giving you the firepower to add excitement to the games you love. Ask my boy Frank Hertz. He knows. College football odds boost, NFL lock of the season, and over 500,000 in contest prizes live on site to make this winning season your best ever with my bookie. 
Can you make a bet on Fabian? What would you bet on? I don't know. Any bets you want to make or take? Have you, did you place bets when you were locked up? And did, you bet, did you bet on sporting events? Yeah, fool. <laughs> this is a betting man right here. Me and myself. Made a lot of money. You made a lot of money. Maybe a lot you of soups. made a lot of soup. They're not going to give you soups. They're going to give you dollars with a historic 18-week schedule offering more action than ever before. You need a sportsbook casino that's reliable, and you won't find a better place to play than my bookie. I know you're going to bet this season, so do the smart thing. Sign up with my bookie and use our promo code PTA to get your first ever deposit match dollar for dollar. That's extra money credited to your account instantly for just using promo code PTA and making your first deposit. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Bet on how many times Fabian shaves his balls in a week. Twice. Twice a week. On schedule. No bets needed to be made here. Anything more than that, you start getting bumps. You start getting bumps. So you're becoming a pro skater, right? But at the same time, like how old were you when you first really f- got fully sponsored? Like one pro, basically. Uh, 21. 21. Yeah. And what was that like for you? 20 or 21. For you and, and people around you, like what, what was it? What was the experience like going pro? Because I remember. No, nah, I was 19. Oh, uh, yeah, it was good. It was good, man. I, I, I liked it because it was like, now I'm getting paid. I don't have to steal shit. Right. You know, I don't have to just like borrow from. I had like, you know, living off of women sucks, man. You know what I mean? It's just like, now it's time to pay back. You were a gigolo. Now it's time to pay back in full. You know, I'm a, I'm a baby. I'm a. AFDC baby for those who know what AFDC means and I know a lot of you welfareas know because uh AFDC means you're a child of welfare so I you know I used to be with a bunch of welfareas you know not Will Ferrell welfareas yeah okay so you know it becomes a it becomes a thing you know so kind of kind of like it gravitates to my therapist tells me it gravitates towards why I keep a full EBT card right now because I like to stand at supermarkets and be like, hey, I got an EBT card. You need need me to pay for them groceries with them five kids? What's <laughs> up? No. And uh, that's how it goes down. And then I'm in the, I end up playing poppy to like five kids for like two weeks. And then I'm gone. And you're gone. Yeah. Like a thief in the night. Like a thief in the night. I'm out of here. Huh? So you go pro. Things are good. Life is good. Life is good, man. You go on tour. Now I can buy my own drugs. Right. And... I could pay for stuff, you know, I don't have to jack. And it's like really beautiful, man. I'm helping, you know, my mom still doesn't believe that I'm a pro skateboarder. <laughs> my mom's like, ah, mijo, you dream big. You know, like you're probably hanging out at the car. She never even, I showed her a magazine with me and then she, really, you're pro? Like, mom, I got my own skateboard, look. She didn't believe me the whole time because I've been a kid, like, I've always had a big imagination, you know? Yeah. Like, I used to always be like, ah, all this and that, make yeah. up stories and shit, you know? Which is good for acting, I heard. For sure. But um, I wasn't, I was just in my own world, man. But, you know, when then when I would say the truth, ah, mijo, stop, she wasn't going stop for making it. shit up. Right. Mijo, we're having beers right now. Don't fuck with us, you know? <laughs> go sit down, go play, you know? So it's like, uh, my family did would always clown me for skateboarding, you know? They would right. always kind of, like, they're not, I'm not going to say they always clown me, but they just were like, you know, like on the fence about it. Right. Like, ah, yeah, that's cool. At least, well, at least he's not out there on the streets, man. Right. But I am on the streets, but You're I'm just not streets. doing street shit. Right. Only when I'm hungry. When right. we go into, like, the markets, you get the bologna, you get the bread, and, and then I'll get, like, some snacks. And we all steal shit to come eat because we were poor, bro. Yeah. We were like poor kids. Yeah. We all, we, all of us that skated, like my friends, my friend's dad was a, he used to collect cardboard, homie, and go downtown. Like, and I grew up with that family, the Harls. Hmm. I grew up with them. Like, shout out to the Harl family, man. They like, like supported me growing up. And, um, you know, Joey, Joey Suriel, poor. We grew up poor. His mom worked hard, come back be mad at me because I'm a guest and I eat all their cookies and shit and they have a bunch of kids there and I didn't, we just ate shit and didn't give a fuck, you know? Mm-hmm. And I and I always ate a lot, a lot, you know? I'm like, and uh, my family was drugs, using, drug selling and major welfare recipients and um, just a bunch of random people coming over for like, you know, to do a little, 
and then leave and uh let me use your restroom for a minute and then bam or right. you know <laughs> right and like fuck that was our house man that's how we lived and that was a scene yeah we got taken the kids got taken away afdc right. came took the kids away i had right. to help my mom get the kids back we all got you know i was like you know i've always been like the the, the brother the dad to my sisters and brothers you know like right. i always helped out i kind of helped out a lot and then there was times i just like got sick with it and sick of the shit and just you know we, we we had it pretty bad man because my mom and dad have always been like uh, into that gang life shit you know mm -hmm. so we all have we we've all played a part in it you know mm -hmm. and um like my sister had a baby at 15 and uh you know we we all just were just scattered you know it's it's how it is life growing up in, in echo park how it used to be mm -hmm. um my mom and dad didn't get clean until like 2007 or six or some shit like that mm. you know i've been clean for three years and seven months now i've mm. been home for nine or ten months now and uh you know like i said i and san quentin changed my life so and then from there i went to pelican bay and um and i just continued taking classes trying to move forward um well how did it get from I mean, I know how it got there, but you were skating, you're a pro skater. Like, were you skating and then you started getting heavier into drugs and then that got you more into crime? Or was it just like skating and doing crime was just kind of like gonna happen no matter what? Well, no, it's just like this. I come home, I have to deal with the home problems at home. Yeah. I could go and hang out with my friends that live in Santa Monica and, and I could go on tour yeah. and live the skateboard life. Yeah. But when I come home, my home base is not healthy it's toxic and it's right. fucked up right and it's not good for for me to grow as a pro skateboarder but but you know it i made the best of it yeah of what i could yeah and i wouldn't change it because that's just the way it was you know that's right. just the way it is and like for example i brought some of the skateboard world to my house i brought shiloh great house kareem campbell guy mariano rudy johnson rick kosick the photographer for Jackass mm -hmm. and uh, some of the filmers for Jackass, um, I brought them guys to, over my house to to do a, a shoot, and it was a shoot that I had for uh, um, with Gabriel Rodriguez. He was there too, and Joey for my interview. My it was a, like a pro spotlight on Big Brother magazine. Mm -hmm. I had this interview like a ten page spread, mm -hmm. and I had the two page spread was me and my family standing there with them behind me. I don't know if you've seen this picture, mm -hmm. but. You know, a fight broke out. Mm -hmm. Kostic is like very scared and, right. you know, he starts like, as soon as I turn around and hear this shit, he's holding me by my shoulders like, like, hey man, I need to get out of here. What, what, what's going to happen? Are we okay? Right. I'm like, dude, we're good. We're good, man. So, you know, that one right there on uh, with the Alomar, right there, the next one, right there. So that one right there was a, you know, my kid was small back then. It was like 1997. My son was only like a few years old. And my, my nephew right there that's next to him, but the one with the hat is my son. Yeah. That little kid with the bald little kid, yeah. that's my sister's kid. And and he passed away a couple years ago. Yeah. And um, passed away at the age of 23. That's all family and friends back there. There's more guys. See where that Guadalupe is? Yeah. There's more people right there that you can't see. There's a couple more heads, but they won't show them. I mean, this this for, you know. This is for like 90s skating, you know? Yeah, and this thing, this had impact. Like seeing this in the skate world, like it's just, it's they, just they not seen. It's, and yeah, they didn't have, they, nobody, look, nobody dressed like that nobody today. Nobody looked like that, yeah. Except for me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. No, really though, it's like, a, that's home. Right. That's home. Right. That's And there's some people there. And that's who that you are, came home to. And they're not even, they're not even here no more. Right. Some of the people are not here no more. Some are locked up. And some, so you're in this like world of touring, skating, you're living in another planet, do, yeah. right? You're meeting girls, you're fucking around, you're partying, and then you come back to Echo Park and it's still the same. And it's like, it's a shock, right? You come, you're in a, you're on a fucking carnival for a couple months and then you come home and it's like, same Dude, shit, I, right? I would love to leave on tour and I would love to go and hang out with my friends and go to the contest, like the Slam City contest in Vancouver, Canada. Cause then from there we'd go to like uh, San Francisco for a while. We'd take like two weeks and We'd stop and get footage. Anytime, any chance I had to get out, I would leave. Mm -hmm. And I would like it because it's so, it's 
some of these people never made it out the block homes right and then and they would ask me like damn how is it over there you get to go to all these places that's pretty cool fabian yeah you know and then i come back and share my stories with them right because they're they're some of them sorry to say but some of them passed away never leaving the block marooned just stuck in that low area yeah yeah and but but uh but they're they're loyal people man and like yeah. they're, they're good-hearted people it's just that that's all you know then when that's all you know that's that's all you get mm -hmm. and you don't you don't try to expand because there's not too much uh I, I i don't know if maybe there was opportunity but they're so stuck in their ways that i'm i'm happy in in this in this rut that i'm in i'm just gonna stay stuck here mm -hmm. and deal with it because this is what i know and i don't want to further my expand my my horizons but i've always been like you know I got into skateboarding and, and if you could see my family, that's just a glimpse of my dad. If you go to my Instagram, you'll see my father. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you go to, if you could go to my Instagram right now and I'll show you what my parents and my family look like. Um, you know, there's a picture down, uh, you know, I, I think that's probably important to, to look at because this is where, this is part of, uh, this is my father, man, so. Look, you'll see this with the Dodger in the hat. The side. And now my dad is, you know, he's been a big influence on my life, you know. So for me, you know, this is like family, mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. you know. These are people that, this is all like, I can't tell you, man. Like, I don't know how to say it. It's just a. Uh, it's home, man. When it's you, when you, you when you, when, when, you know, no matter what kind of money danny trejo has been given mm -hmm. and blessed with and the life that he's been blessed he's blessed bro with the the best life ever he still dresses like like danny trejo yeah same with emilio yeah rivera mm -hmm. good good friend of mine like i i i could call him my friend i could call him anytime he'll you know he'll we always talk i, I i've grown close to him and and to danny and um you know I, i've uh i can honestly say like these people have changed their 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 drive they've mm -hmm. changed their their perspective in life mm -hmm. but they're still the same person right like deep down inside they're like you know they still got their manias there's certain ways that they are mm -hmm. and they carry themselves mm -hmm. with 100 percent respect and they and they they value everything you know so so you basically this is this is where it gets interesting so you were in jail for what five years you said um this time yeah five this time, years this, this time. time yeah and um <laughs> there was a story you were telling me at the shoot about i mean you probably can't tell the story there goes my was, dad right there let's go down see that one no down up up my bad up right up up right there see that top one this one no yes no the one in the middle Oh, I see your bed. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's in the far left corner. And what happened? What were you saying? Um, we're I'm just talking about... That's solid dad. Basically, the ups and downs, right? Yeah. From like being a pro skater, then you end up in prison, and then you come out, and you get sober, right? And now, you just shot a film. Yeah. But I want to tell the story, like, if you can tell us about how the last time you went to jail like how that happened or what it, you know you know as much yeah. as you want to say and then and then how you kind of were able to move through that and come out of jail and like become a different person right because you obviously if you're navigating this other world you got you can't play by those rules anymore right uh, no no you have to you you have to change certain things about your life you know and and it starts in the hardest place ever in prison it starts in there you know um of course, you know, there's rules that cannot be ignored. And then there's things that are requested of you because of who you are and what a part you play in the whole spectrum that you cannot say no. But you don't have to be like this anymore. Mm. Like, I'll do it. You don't have to be that guy like, hey, man, I, or, and you don't have to run with a certain crowd. But of course, they're going to come. You're 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 selective. You're selected randomly and just like, boom, and your time comes and, you know, you use your time to shine. And uh, uh, 
a lot of people. Do you guys know what he's talking about? A lot of people. A about? lot of people know. Okay. A lot of people know. A lot of people know that you know you 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 know you can't say no to certain things, mm -hmm. and and um, you have to, or else that become you become the victim. So, but they see the drive in you, <clears throat> and so they they see me going to college, and you know, furthering myself with these classes that I was involved in, like ARC with Scott Budnick, and um. So I, I, uh, I gotta be smart. I gotta be smart. And, um, there's a lot of people that are just like this. They're always like tough guys, you know, they're like no personality. They're this fucking microphone has more personality than a lot of people in prison. You know what I'm saying? They're like too stiff, but the OGs that have been there a long time, they, they know how to, how to, they're, they're good at talking to people and reading and getting the truth out of you and and kind of like digging into your and just so that they could get to, to know who you are now for those guys that want to go in there all stiff and think they're bad and shit there's they got something for you mm -hmm. you know there's mm -hmm. a plan for you set up already and it's a it's a it's not a good plan mm. it's it's a one-way ticket you know and um and uh so you got to be smart to maneuver right and 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 according to how you know your situations are in there and how they see you because everyone's at a different level i couldn't go and kick it with certain people in there because they're above my pay grade if you right. know what i mean right 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 so and i you know you don't fuck with la onda <laughs> You know right. what I'm saying? If you mm -hmm. ever seen any movies, you you should know. So <laughs> yeah. you 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 go you go with the you go play with your the with your friends. You know right. what I mean? You go hang out when and then but just know that they're there and you're at their beck and call. Right. Anytime. So there's a and now there's also an order. The pecking order of this whole thing is just like uh according to how okay, let me see. Uh you've been around before, you know what time it is. So you got some ink on you that is telling me that you're that guy. Mm. So now you're, I already know. All I need to do is ask you and you're 100% going to say yes. Right. And if you say no, then it's a kind of like, well, then what the fuck? Is this all for show? Right, right. An right. advertisement? Right. So be careful what you say. Be careful what you wish for and be careful what you put on your body. Right and how you move in there and right. and this is the worst enemy that right. you're you're with the words you say will eventually come back and bite you in the ass huh. if you're if you're not careful so i you know me personally i mind my own business of course i like to play around and yeah joke. you're you're funny i think about that too you're a funny I guy i got told i got you're told. funny guy. yeah 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 well, yeah Funny how? Okay, funny so how? Now, we, no. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> he's, I said you're funny. You got jokes. You, you. So the, that that could get that the being funny. Yeah, could get you in trouble too. Yeah, you know. So I got I had to like you know tone it down a notch. Right. And uh, you know when that's the good thing about knowing when to fuck with people and when not to. Mm -hmm. And there's a time for jokes. There's a time to just shut up and just pay attention and listen. And sometimes you just got to put on the stone, the stone cold, you know, and just be like bland and blend in. And did you watch guys go in there and be too mm -hmm. lippy, funny, yep. and no. all of a sudden they're just in a wreck somewhere? Yeah. I've watched guys do this and, and then end up, you know, bad. So, you know, and, and they, at first they didn't, the whole acting thing, the whole Cholos try was not really liked and Pelican Bay. Right. They were like, what? You're an actor? Right. What's this thing I hear you doing about Cholos? Cholos try. Right. So I had to go and be like, hold up. <laughs> Here I come in peace. Right. <laughs> Let me explain to you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Let me humble myself. Right. And bow down and talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I had to go and explain and be like, blah, 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 blah. And eventually they came around and yeah. were like, all right, he's a funny guy. Yeah, this guy is a real funny guy. Yeah. So whenever they were drinking Pruno, right? Hey, go call Hollywood. Go call the skater. <laughs> call him. And we would, they would want to see me. Here I come. Dun, 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 you know the fucking <laughs> entertainment monkey. You know, so 
I, I was like the entertainment for them at certain times. And it was cool because it's it's just a way of me make breaking my my bones with them and just earning my spot and um uh, being in there with these hey, guys you gotta be I, on I'm, they, they want to laugh they, you better be on right you... bro toughest crowd in the world <laughs> toughest crowd in the world bro uh, is this thing on huh? yeah like oh boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah tough crowd in here huh hey no no time for fucking uh stuttering yeah fucking stuttering yeah. tom and shit right you can't stuttering john will not last in there you gotta be like okay so they get me out of bed and call wow. me out of like my sleep, like fuck, or like just you know little things. So it was kind, of, it was cool though, man. It, I mean, I don't want to go do it again, but no. it was, it was, it was a, uh, it was cool. But next time I go back there, I'll go back there to speak. Yeah, next year. Yeah, and I'm trying what's, to plan. What's I'm Cholo's to try? That. What's that? So the Cholo's try is something I did in 2015 in November 15, 2015. I did this thing called the uh, Cholo's try. It was just like they offered me 40 bucks and a couple hundred followers you'll probably get but the 40 dollars was a given i gave that to my uber driver to take me there and to drive me back i didn't get nothing for it right but i did get more than a couple hundred followers and uh i got 22 million views on a video that in two days wow. that we did on and it came all on facebook so the company me too excuse me the company me too just like loved us and um and they eventually Comcast got involved and gave us a job. Yeah. Comcast was like, we want to put you guys and give you guys your own app and do a show with you. And we're going to give you X amount of money. Oh, that's shit. One, I know this. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one yeah, that kicked yeah. it off. Wait, and then, but you went to jail after this happened. After, bro. And I remember I, seeing this. I would, this was fucking funny. This was on TMZ, bro. This was funny. Yeah. This was on TMZ. If you go to their website, it shows you on TMZ. So oh, I, yeah. got, I got, I'm the one that was on I TMZ know exactly with them. what this is. <laughs> oh yeah so that you go to jail after this and they're like hey what the fuck is that yeah right. so they're like wait you're a vegan cholo right right right. so like what's a vegan cholo like, right that's me you guys <laughs> that's me sorry <laughs> yeah hi anyway it's fucked up because uh you know i i i i made the best of but, but but here it is if i had just been like a regular like nobody yeah and went in there and been all scared and been like i never been to jail before those guys would have had their way with me. You know right. what I'm saying? I'd come, like out, like, I'd really... come out like a blow up though. I'd have been like, <laughs> no, I'm joking. So I'd be, I would have, I would have, I would have been totally a Latino joking. blow up. <laughs> no. So I would have, I would have. Any, any tips for these guys when, when they finally, uh, when they end up in jail? Cause they're both on their way pretty quickly. And yeah. It's, you know, let's give, let's give them some pointers. Jason and Alex. Um, yeah, Jason. You, Jason, you first put, day. Put in. a picture of Jason up when you say this. Yeah, too, please. we got to show Jason. Come, come show yourself in the camera, dude. He's got this he, guy looks like fucking Robert Plant. <laughs> he's got that, but he's got cracked school, out. Okay, he's got school shooter vibes, yeah. so he can have. He's that. got almost he be, famous vibes. Yeah, he looked like he was an extra on Almost Famous. So this guy, like, he's like a young Howard Stern here. <laughs> and, uh, I, I never thought. I never saw that. It yeah, is, he's got. He's dude, got, but yeah, you know what? don't go to jail just don't go don't go just skip bro. it don't okay. go and if you do go stay close to the cops and just uh you better have you better shit your pants and walk around there with just doo-doo all over your ass right out the gate just yeah. establish that you're yeah. just a jay cat and, and just eat just it shit yourself yeah. eat shit eat it eat yeah. your own caca and just be like i'm crazy yeah bang your head against the wall <laughs> and just don't they won't want you after that yeah, yeah. you'll be like i'll oh, get this fucker out of here they'll probably punch you a couple of times but you'll be good rather than what you're supposed to right yeah right okay. i just walk around with doo-doo bro <laughs> walk around doo-doo all right get out just don't go to jail you're good bro all right you're fine you're just good. don't go cops won't even uh, fucking yeah there's jails for guys like you now <laughs> <laughs> so so okay so you you know right here my man right here shit he's gonna he's gonna last bro he's gonna pull through come over here bro come on come over here Looks Please. like the guy on fucking um. Remember that? What's his name? The dude on um Boogie Nights. The black dude on Boogie Nights. What's his oh, name? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, he does look like fucking um. Booty right. What's his name? No, not Booty No, what's his no. name? He was in uh. He's in everything. He's in everything. What's, yeah. his, name? He's in, uh, he's in he's in everything. what's his name? He's an amazing actor. Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. He does have yeah. some Don. Don he does Cheadle. Some Don, Don Cheadle, Cheadle energy. In the house? He's got a yeah. little Don. Nah, that's a that's a comedy. Yeah. Don Cheadle yeah. vibes. Yeah, you got young <laughs> Don, Don Cheadles. Don Cheadle in colors. He was rocket. Don Cheadle. Yeah, and I'm fucking Robert Plant. 
Don Cheeto. We got stars up in here. We got fucking Robert knockoff Plant. Clooney. Come on. Don. Robert Plant, Don Cheeto. Yeah. You remember him in Colors? Fuck Don yeah. Don Cheeto, Rocket. Yeah, Rocket, boy. Sorry, method actor right there. Damn, sick ass motherfucker. That feels Don hard. Don Cheeto can handle himself in prison? In jail? He's an actor. He's, he, Dog, what? Don Cheeto go to jail. He's got to lock it up. PC. Yeah, yeah because so he's, too, he's super popular. Yeah. But you, the knockoff it, Don Cheeto, the knockoff you Don could Cheeto, probably yeah. pull it off and be like, hey, man, I'm a stunt double. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Let me run with the, with the bloods and the crypts, <laughs> man. What's up? Don Cheeto and Howard Stern. You better do some method acting in there, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> For um, real. Hey, then that's that's the shit, man. You do kind of look resemble, bro. Yeah, I never, I never knew. <laughs> you better look at no, bro. No one sold me. That. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So, so you're in jail, and uh, you get sober, right? Yeah. And you come out sober. Yeah. You manage to get sober fucking, in jail. What's up with that guy? Is that fucking Juan? Yeah. What's up with fucking Felipe, bro? I'm grab an apple. Talk to that vodka. Fuck, I look like in the second grade or what? Fuck, no, I don't want no apples. Did I do good today or what? <laughs> Did I get an apple? <laughs> Fuck, an apple and a, and a happy face? You're doing great. Oh my gosh, he offers me an apple. Hey, in, in prison, your apples are the bomb. Hey, they, <laughs> apples are like made, they make pruno out of apples, homie. I eat the whole core. And I eat the apple, I eat the core, I eat everything. You do? You eat the whole shit? The whole thing. And, 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 the, and I will not eat a bologna sandwich. I will not eat peanut butter jelly sandwiches. I will not eat murachan soup and apples because that all reminds me of jail and prison right they give you that mandatory and like cereal fuck that i need cereal i love cereal because they give you cereal all the time but it's just like cornflakes with no sugar but apples remind me of like because everyone's like hey you're gonna eat your apple because they want to collect them to make pruno it's the nastiest shit you could drink bro but i used to dog the man that was like super bowl night like, yeah you can go blind drinking that yeah shit, right? i know wait where are you <laughs> That's why I'm like this. But my glasses on, I ain't taking them off. When I take them off, I'm like that. Look. <laughs> you completely Fucking Pluto does this. <laughs> so, you sober up, you come out. What, what? What's like, do you have a plan when you come out of jail? You're sober? Like, yeah. Stay at least sober. you're sober. Right? <laughs> stay sober and out of jail. Right. That's my plan. They're just, I don't know. That's it. Uh, I, I, I wanted to just come home and, um, make sure that i stay clean that's number one because with me being clean means that i'm gonna stay in church means that i'm gonna follow through with what i'm doing because once i get high or once i take that first drink or that first toke it's the beginning of the end it's all down after that bro downhill and i can't i can't afford that yeah. I, I have i have on record four strikes against me mm. now i have the reason why I have two standing strikes is because the four strikes, these two strikes, I've used the Romero Act in, j in, in, in jail when you're going to court in CCB downtown and you're going to court. I've used the Romero Act to get out of to fight. You strike, strike your strikes. It's a it's a it's a um, it's a what they call it. Um, you use a. It's a penal code that you use to strike your strikes. Mm. You know, you, you you do everything in the book to try to get out of it. I've been offered 50 to life. I've been offered 25 to life. I've this last time I fought 26 years to life with 10 years on top. That means I got to die after doing 26 years to life. And then after that, I get 10 more years. So it's insane. Like ridiculous numbers, man. There's people in there with insane numbers but like you know what are they charging but, with? but just like captain insano you know you're gonna get insano years added to you because the judge looks at you I, I did i did nothing but fight you know fighting uh violence and um that, that's, it, that's what it put it, you it, under that motherfucker yeah either. because of because of my because of you know and, and i and i did this with my hands so you know i've i've had like uh Going back, like when I caught my first carjack, you know, I had a, I had kidnapped somebody, and um, I, and they found the ice pick, they found the big ass ice pick, eleven inch, and all this right here was filled with cocaine resin, because that's what I was poking my pipe with to smoke crack, 
And it had two different types of DNA on there. But it wasn't mine. It was just two different two different DNAs. And they were like, so this is not your victim that you supposedly didn't stab. But these are two other DNAs. So you used you used that your victim? You had a different type of knife. And I said, nope, I found it. I found this in a place where I was smoking crack in MacArthur Park. Hmm. And I used it because it was given to me. Just like that car was given to me. Yeah. I, I didn't steal. I didn't jack nobody and put nobody in a trunk. No. For three days. That guy was in the trunk. <laughs> yeah. Someone lent you his car. said, you want to borrow my car, sir? You said, I would love to borrow your car, sir. You didn't tell me there was a body back there. I didn't know. How would you know there's a body? And also, I'm smoking crack in my car at the park like anyone does. I thought and I was I'm, hearing voices when I heard, hey, give me a... <laughs> I, I was like tripping. Every no. time I take a hit, I hear, give me a... I didn't know there was a body back there. Pushing your chore away with an ice pick you just found on the ground. Found it. Casual. Found it. It happens. Shit happens. Shit Only happens. in LA and MacArthur Park. So, you um, you come out of jail, right? I gotta say, do you, okay, do you, the, remember I was, I was telling you about the, I think it might have been your stories or on your grid when you're, when you're watching this kid trying to land a trick for like a fucking half hour. Oh yeah. What was that on? Was that on IGTV or was that on stories? IGTV, yeah. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bo, get in his Instagram. It's fucking hilarious. You're watching, you're, <laughs> I saw that, I saw that clip and I was fucking dying. I'm like, dude, Smonto, we got to get this guy talking in front of camera for something. This fucking um, kid. But, uh. That kid ended up. Uh, it was in front of Fairfax, like right, yeah. right by Fairfax. And uh, this kid, bro, how can I say? It? Yeah. This, um, this this little kid ended up hitting me up and saying, he did? That, that, "That was me." He got a hold of you. That was me, <laughs> man. <laughs> he did, uh -huh. and I was like, "Yeah, well, next time, don't fucking." You should have won for it. Yeah, don't be a pussy. Just do it, man. Keep on pushing, lady. <laughs> Interrupting, skating. Uh, you got to ollie. He's going to do it, man. You just got to go balls out. Just ollie it. Miss Doubtfire. <laughs> Miss right. Doubtfire. Right now, he's got butterflies. He's mustering up the courage to do it. <laughs> he said he has a lot of balls. He said something like his stepfather, <laughs> Gary, is there watching him, disappointed in him. Think about it. Because <laughs> his dad the right first there. first one's going <laughs> to pop your cherry. His looks like his dad. Yeah. Dude, he did, su puta like, madre. Don't do you can that. only do like you're you only allowed to do like two or three of those no before you do it. To, that's it. You don't got no time to like know, man. Yeah, push room to, to set up that. for the ollie. He got one good push and then ollie. Come on, you rocking a supreme shirt. You should be coaching him. You got a supreme sweater on, bro. Coach him. <laughs> the dad had a supreme, example, Mr. The supreme, supreme sweater. sweater. Yeah, probably bought that shit. You didn't get it free. Hob didn't give it to you. The guy filming. You didn't get that free from Hob. You ain't nobody. All right, we'll post it. All we'll right, post it. come on. Yeah, okay, look at his face. Look. Um, so I, I'm bouncing all over the place. You're out of jail. You're clean and sober. I think he's done, no? You want to pop that window? That fuck is yours. Boy, it's burning up in here. Sorry, bro. Sorry, Mr. Don Cheeto. He does that when I'm in here trying to meditate and shit. I know. He doesn't... starts blowing me. I'm like, fuck, man. Come on. Let me be at peace. Yeah. It's hot in here. It's, but it's, I love the apartment, man. Hey, come on. I like it. It has like... That old Hollywood feel, like an actor lives here. <laughs> yeah, it John does. John Lovitz? I think I saw his car parked. John Lovitz. You know what it's called? I feel like the there's two there's two Mercedes Benzes downstairs that say John Lovitz, J N L O V I T Z on them. There's a black one and a white one. But they're old eighties Mercedes. And I don't think that I think that John Love has made a lot of fucking money, and I don't think he's got an '80s Mercedes that has a, a vanity plate. Is it plate. vintage anyway, or is it like it's not is really it like old school shit? It's not that. It's it like it doesn't look super vintage. It's not like vintage enough. Vintage enough, yeah. It yeah. looks like, but like you, like you just can't afford it. I feel like that yeah. dude made so much money. He had like yeah, the, he like, made money. He made the, he did the critics. He did he well, movies. Bro. Like he did good, right? He did good. Dude, wedding oh. singer. Not just that, he did the one. Uh, 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 there's this movie where. Uh, uh, they're on a big air balloon. It's like the, oh, the rat race. Yeah. The rat race. Remember that? I never saw that one. Dude, dude, that's such a funny movie. It's a, I love Mr. the Bean rat race. Bro. Yeah, Mr. Bean is in it. And these two comedian dudes, these white kids that are funny uh, as hell. Uh, yeah. 
That's a good one. Good, yeah. but man, the rat race is so dope, bro. They're all trying to get this money and shit, and they're all racing. They, like, it's funny, dog. I don't want to kill it for you, but. So how did you end up? I met that guy before. John Lovitz? Yeah, in North Hollywood. He's funny. Yeah, at, at like uh, events. They you don't know, make him like that anymore. Look at that guy. That. Look at him. Yeah, look at that face, bro. You know, he does this show called uh, The Hollywood Squares. And he does that like um, it's like uh, something I, I don't know. It's like Hollywood Squares, but like someone goes on this on. They say now would uh, does has Ben Affleck. How many how many times did J-Lo and Ben Affleck get together? And then this person, this random person from this uh, whatever the contestant will be like, I'm going to say. I'm going to say three. No, they, they go. No, they'll, they'll ask the celebrities. There's a bunch of panel of celebrities. And they ask the celebrity. He's always on there. And they'll be like. Oh, they make a joke and then they say like three, four times, you know, about as much as I've been with my wife and they'll laugh and play a joke. And then, and then, huh. and then, and then, uh, and then they ask all the celebrities and they go and they ask them, what do you think? Uh, was it, what, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with John Lovitz. Hmm. So she goes with John Lovitz and then, you know, they, they each have a turn. I'll take John Lovitz a block, no, please. No, I'll take, I'll, like John Lovitz is, ne he's next on the panel. So then he gets to answer. Then this person gets to answer this celebrity. So then that's how it goes. And it's crazy. Like he's on that show. That's it. Funny you should ask. You watch it. I just looked it up. Okay. Funny you should ask. That's it. And you know, I, I want to meet out of all them people right there, bro. I would love to meet uh uh Byron, Byron Allen. Oh yeah. Byron Allen is dope, bro. He's a big producer, does all kinds of stuff, and like always involved. You know? So you just did Anderson a film. too. Yeah. You just you just shot it was your first feature? First big feature, yeah. How did you? Uh, oh wait, yep. How did you end up on the Mayans? You're on the Mayans, right? Yeah. How did um, that happen? That well, sheesh. That that was from like when I was in prison. Mm. Um. Uh, Elgin James replied back to me because mm -hmm. I'm in the I'm in a program called ARC with Scott Budnick. Yeah. In Pelican Bay, that's his favorite prison. Okay. Um. Who's that? Who's Scott? Scott Budnick. Look up Scott Budnick on Instagram. You'll see. Scott Budnick is the founder of the Anti-Recidivism Coalition. And he's also the executive producer for Just Mercy, um, Old School, the movie Old School, Just Mercy, and all of the uh, all of the Hangover franchise. Oh, wow. So he's, he's super legit. loaded. Yeah. yeah. He is legit. He just did the Respect, the Rita Franklin movie. All right. And he's working on another series right now. Um, he's always working on something. Uh, Scott Budnick is dope, bro. He's like, he's a good dude, and he has a good heart, and he's a good friend of mine. With the, with, with the, with the open, with open arms, when you're doing the right thing, he'll help you continue. Hmm. And he sees you pushing. You know, he he's he's all about prison reform and for kids not getting tried as adults and getting like a hundred years for right. not doing anything. And right. then, like, even if you did get sentenced like a hundred years. Only fifteen or ten years is enough. You yeah. don't need to do your 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 ref, how how many years does it take for you to get reformed? Right. According to how you're doing your time, and if you're doing the you know, it's because sometimes the board doesn't want to release you, man. Yeah. And you've been doing good for like the like the past twenty years. Yeah. They but you've got sentenced fifty years. You have to do your fifty years sentence. I've been good for twenty years. Doesn't that say something? Right. In prison, it's like it's hard to do good for like six months. It's hard right. to do good for two days. Right. Depending on where you're at, but. You know, so he has a big heart, man. I'm so glad that Gavin Newsom uh, got got voted yeah. back in and won yeah. because he's also for reform and helping people come out. I, I I helped vote for him. So you just wrote him a letter and you got. I wrote to. I wrote to. No, him. I know him from prison. He used you know, to come to my oh, cell. Used to come. Oh, he used okay. to come to my cell and be like, "Hey, you know," and come talk to me and talk to different people, not just me. But I used to pull him over and shit and talk to Scott. Scott's a good dude, man. And uh, he had a bunch of other guys with him, Joseph and uh, Mark. They were always with him. And those are the guys that I used to go to. And they, they're ex-lifers ex themselves. So those ex-lifers would go and like he gave them jobs to go back into prisons and teach other prisoners how to reform. And if I could do it, you could do it. I'm live your, I'm an example. Yeah. So, and it's a it's a way of like to stop the that revolving door, bro. Right. It's that revolving door that we all get caught up in. Because when we come home, we got two hundred dollar gate money, which which isn't shit because where, wherever you're coming out of, it costs seventy five dollars to get home on a bus. Yeah. So you're stuck with one hundred and twenty five bucks. You want to buy some food, you know? You're now you're down to a hundred bucks. So 
what's a hundred dollars or anything gonna well, two hundred dollars even if you had the whole 200 what's that gonna do for you shit out here is expensive yeah excuse me so um i i think he he teaches you to you know not that uh, most criminals get get depressed when they're broke right and they, they're getting the door slammed in front of them because of their record while in his in his organization there are multiple different facets of jobs bro different types of jobs whether it's anything in union or non-union he could get you in and give you a career path and you could go to school so and they pay you while you go and you could work at his office on sixth street mm. he has a big big office he'll he'll get you started clothing place to stay whatever you need man they take retreat trips they go on retreats like to like big river rafting and shit i haven't gone because i've been busy but uh, he's offered for me to go and to go hang out. So when Scott came to my cell and asked me um, about, like, if I wanted to get into ARC, I was like, dude, I would love that. And then he recognized who I was. I told him a little bit about myself, and he was like, cool. So every time he see me and I talk to him about, you know, when I come home, I want to get back into acting. I got a certificate from doing the program, and I and I mailed it home and had my family post it on my page mm -hmm. and it's on my page as a, as a certificate so the certificate said that i would had graduated and from arc one one of the phases there's a bunch of different phases but i posted and it's just a, a certificate on my page and with that elgin james because i tagged elgin james and i tagged danny trejo they hit me back uh -huh. and um elgin james hit me back saying hey uh Let's get you back on set and create some art. Hit me up when you get out. So I did. I did just that. And I hit you, him up. Was that exciting news to get? Like you're like, well, shit. There's something. Fuck going on it, it kept, dude. For me to, it was like five months for me to come home, and I'm like, he wants to put me on set. That's yeah. like, pff, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I could think about. I was just busting down, like you know, just yeah. trying to eat right and do good. Yeah. So I come out, and um, that's not it. It's just a, a certificate. Could keep going lower go down more and um I, I i i hit him up on my obama phone bro i hit him up right like hey i got this obama phone what's up bro you you serious he's like he hit me back up saying yeah let's do it let's get you let's get you on set and let's create some art and he's like i'm like my people are gonna hit you with an email and i'm like what the fuck are you serious so within a month i was on ready to i was already signing the contract and ready to go on the mayans bro and he and it, and it just so happened that pelican bay is up there by by uh, Pelican Bay is up there by, right there, see it, ARC. Pelican Bay is up there by fucking Oregon and Portland. He makes me the Portland president of the of the Mayans. Right. I don't know if it's coinkadinky or if it's just meant to be, right. but he did that. Thank you, Elgin. Um, love you, man. And uh, he did that for me. And I, I'm happy, bro. I'm like super psyched. I, I, I became, I just started being really, really, uh, really focused and 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 after that just started you know wanting to do it more so i did this buzzfeed thing that went viral and i did this video with the um i i did a music video with uh with danny trejo and danny trejo's son gilbert gilbert who mm -hmm. who directed it and it was for um arrow uh, her group oh her yeah. Group. yeah yeah i forgot I the name. what's about. the name of the group again uh Otter, uh, arrow Otter the wild arrow some yeah but no no that the name of the i forgot man i'm sorry yeah, i I'm, forgot i got a bad memory that it comes to shit like that yeah. so uh anyway uh i just been working and trying to just stay doing you know uh star uh star star crawler so it's called star crawler yeah, yeah. and uh i was in their music video right and on uh, good time girl and uh man so anything i've done prior to that has just been outreach you know it's it's been good bro it's been it's just been really solid having him right there by me and shit is it's been good i've been i got an agent now right and you just I, wrapped a film i'm the auditioning yeah i, I wrapped the flaming hot flaming hot flaming hot yeah with evil longoria the hot cheeto story there, there it is right there's a good shot so uh yeah for che the cheetos the flaming hot it's a story about richard montanez um richard montanez is uh is the guy who in he was a janitor at frito-lay and um at the frito-lay factory and 
you know, uh, a homie just like like me and got given a job to be a janitor. But that's why he, when he talks, he says, like, if you're going to be a janitor and mop that floor, mop that floor and do it with 100 percent. So they, they, they know that you mop that floor and it's, yeah. it came up from you. Right. Do everything you do at the at the the fullest potential and the highest of your of your ability. You know, do it right. It's a like good metaphor to to have. You know, and, and um, he's a good dude, man. He's now a billionaire. Like, is sitting back, chilling, pretty, mm. pretty life, like beautiful, everything. You know, just not. I I think I think he's a role model and a hero. Like, and people are gonna know his story. You know, it's a. It's a, it's a good it's a good story a beautiful story a true story, and um, yeah he's he was a uh, he was on set with us and giving us the stuff like the ammo to to work with you know and he was okay and everything and it feels good when you're doing something and he's like and he gives you the props and you're doing it by right, him right and, right you know that's his life he lived it and he had his homeboys with him and you know he he made it he made it he made us feel comfortable. Yeah, I, I love. I, that was my first time doing anything that of that of that size, man, with Disney and um, uh, uh, Fox Searchlight. You know, so it's serious, serious yeah. business. Yeah, it's crazy. Congratulations. It's big. Thank you. When's it coming out? Next year, around this time. Okay. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a minute. Mm -hmm. They're talking about they wanted to get into theater, so so they could get, you know, there's that. There's this thing called the four walls that they have to put it in the academy, mm -hmm. so it could be presented at, uh, in the Academy Awards, so they can have a nomination. So it has to be the theater and stuff. Right. That's where it's aimed at, but now I'm not saying it's going to go there. But so it's a, the, is it a drama or that's comedy? the intention? No, it's a, it's a, a drama. Oh wow! It's a biopic. Oh shit! Yeah, that's amazing. What a fucking the story of his life, bro. And what's your part in it? Um, I play the the I play his homeboy, Pablito, oh, wow. who grew up with him in the neighborhood. Crazy, uh, lifelong friends, and um, my the the period piece we did was from 1972 to 1992. Oh shit! So I'm in that whole little part. Right. Yeah. There you go. I mean, talk about a talk about a story, a trajectory from where you come from. Yeah. Being a feature film. Right. Anything can happen. Yeah. yeah man. You know. Yeah, and, it and, does. and you know, and and, and it's crazy because, you know, last night I was at the uh, at this event for the Farm Workers Justice Awards, mm -hmm. and uh, Dolores Huerta was there, and she's the one who was like side by side with Cesar Chavez during the farm, when, like in the '60s in the farm when they were pushing for the Farm Workers Justice, and um, and and into the '70s. So, um, it was a. Uh, it was cool to run into a lot of people there and I ran into a judge and this judge is from CCB where I've been in those tanks and he's on the 13th floor and I've been on the 13th floor. That's the criminal court building where you go and, you know, the parts that I've been into, you know, like it's, it's like, there's a bunch of shit that happens there. It's fighting and, you know, a lot of, a lot of gang shit that happens there, a lot of wars and shit, a lot of fights. But going into the court and for him to be a judge and me to meet him and now meet a judge on the outside at an event. Right. I said, man, it's funny because I would only meet judges in court and I would be scared to shit. Right. You know, um, and now meeting you on this red carpet and shaking your hand, I'm not so scared. You know? Right, right, right. And, uh, and, and now I'm asking you if I can go and talk to these kids I'm asking him and he's talking to me about, yeah, let's get you in one of my programs where like I could get you to go and talk to some of these youngsters and and um, mentor them, foster children and kids at youth that are kids that, that are at risk with youth that are at risk. And I, I, that's all I want to do, bro. That's what I want to do. So um, it's just crazy how it makes a full circle, man. And like, you know, when you're on the right path or doing something good, you know, good things come around, but you have to stay in that circle because once you veer out and go and stray away, man, anything can happen. Now you you're stay in now, the middle of the pack. You're yep. open. You're yep. open to like all the crazy shit that you know you don't want to be in. Yeah, leave yourself vulnerable. That's what happens. 
Oh, I'm gonna stay with the pack, man. I'll stay with the, you know. Stay in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> you get picked Sur off on the edges. Surrounded by the yeah. buffalo, bro. Yeah. They protect you. Yeah. 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 It's good though, man. And, and you know, we we I made a lot of a lot of good connections and people last night to where like I'm gonna go and I'm getting invited to go to the Chargers. I'm not a Chargers fan per se, but they are part of California. So like San Diego, I, I ain't tripping. But I've never been to an NFL football game ever. You know, I'm not even a big fan of football, period. You know? I'll tell you the truth. Like, I like, I, I would just bet on money, you know, like who's winning. It's not like, oh, man, they better win. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not really a fan like that of the Raiders, the Rams. I give a shit. And whoever's winning, if I'm betting money, mm -hmm. that's how I used to see it because I'm not a football fan. I'm a, I'm a fan of skateboarding and I like uh, boxing and shit like that. Like, like, I love boxing. But um, um, for some reason, I like parkour, too. <laughs> yeah, I like to see people fucking do crazy shit like that. God, I wish I knew that stuff when I was smoking crack, boy. Because I, I think I used to try shit like that before everybody. And there's a picture of me. There's a picture of me jumping off some building in Europe, man. Parkour is like skateboarding without a skateboard. Yeah. You know? It's like an invisible. Yeah, it's like I mean, skating, like doing half pipe tricks on the street. Yeah. Because you're doing like <laughs> like a McTwist from like from here down to the street. You do a McTwist and then land on something and bounce off that and then hit, yeah. the, hit the sidewalk. They, when they jump from building to building, I'm just like, damn, you just risked your life for, yeah, for some clout. It's great. Yeah, but they're wild. This is wild, wild. I place. love parkour, bro. That that shit makes me like, I'm glued to it. I'm glued to that shit. There it is. He loves parkour, ladies and gentlemen. This has been yeah. Fabian. Broke it off. Uh, that was a good what? Two hours? We got about an hour, half hour, forty. Before you chop it up. Yeah. You chop it up a little bit. Will you have time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll the, uh, the apple. Yeah.